let's move right into our quick hitters. Arky, what are you looking at in your quick hitter of the day? Colorado Avalanche. This is a hockey hey. talk, y'all. Taking on the Anaheim Ducks. They are not mighty, especially since they're on a three-game losing streak right now. And the Avalanche are minus 280 on the money line. And I would be an irresponsible jerk to tell you to take the Avalanche on the money line. Because A, it's going to happen. And B, look at all that juice. It's just that sometimes it's worth that squeeze. You know, you want a little bit of, <laughs> little bit of a nutrition in your diets. Not tonight. What I'm looking at is the total. And I like the over six and a half. <clears throat> and I like it. A lot in this game because you look at exactly what Colorado is. They're a scoring machine. They do it all the time. In fact, they're so good at scoring, they give up a bunch of goals too. Like they just want to keep it interesting by giving up a bunch as well. And I'm paying attention to see if Darcy Kipper is going to play a goal tonight for, uh, for, for Colorado. He played on Monday night. He got pulled in that game because he got hit up in the head. Uh, he played a couple more minutes afterwards, but the NHL's uh, concussion guy said get him off the ice. And I, I, I know that can be worrisome because he gives up goals. But guess who also gives up goals? <clears throat> Everybody on that Colorado Avalanche roster. It's great. It's great. That's why I love the total in this game because it's going to be so much. In fact, let me make sure I get these numbers exactly right. I wrote them down. Uh, so uh, Darcy Kemper uh, has uh, played in the last seven games with him in net. 7.3 goals have been scored in those games. If he's not in net, 8.1 goals are scored huh. and 3 <laughs> 3.9 goals are allowed again uh, uh, for Colorado if he's not in net. So, Darcy Kipper, they, look, I read earlier that he's going to be on the ice, so that's a good sign early on. Even he gives up a couple he gives up like 2.7 goals uh, per, or 2.17 goals per game, which is, you know, lower third in the NHL when it comes to guys uh, who are putting a lot of time on the ice. So, I like the over six and a half a lot in this in this game. So give me the Avs Ducks over six and a half. Love it. Let's go. I am looking to the NBA where the Pacers will face the Lakers. Does that rhyme? It, Whatever. It's of, close enough. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana is fifteen and twenty nine, three and seventeen on the road, while the Lakers are twenty two and twenty two, fifteen and eleven at home. Right now, L.A. is the five-point favorite with the total sitting at 225 and a half. I got to say, my NBA and NHL bets did pretty well last night, so let's keep this train a-rolling today. This will be the second meeting between these two teams this season. The first one came on November 24th. It saw the Lakers pull out a win in overtime at Indiana, 124-116. In that game, LeBron led the Lakers with the team high of 24 points, while Brogdon had 28 for the Pacers. That line was set at 6.5, meaning the Lakers did cover in that one. Here we go. The Pacers are 13th in the Eastern Conference. They will be going up against the Lakers, who are currently 7th in the West. The Pacers are looking to snap a four-game losing streak and eight road game losing, uh, eight road losses in a row, which might be tough to do considering their road record this season. Is yes, three and 17. So I don't know that that's going to change tonight. LA enters the night with a win over Utah on Monday, but has gone two and three in their last five and six and four in their last ten. As far as who is playing and who is not, Mello, LeBron, and Dwight are all day-to-day -day for the Lakers, while Anthony Davis and Kendrick Nunn remain out for the Lakers. <clears throat> Malcolm Brogdon and Jeremy Lamb are day-to-day -day for Indiana, and TJ McC McConnell, Miles Turner, and TJ Warren will all be sitting this one out tonight for Indiana. Which leads me into those team leaders. DeMontis Sabonis leads Indiana in points and rebounds, uh, points and, rebounds and assists at 18.9, 11.9, and 4.7, respectively. LeBron continues to take Anthony Davis' spot in the team leader scoring for the Lakers, averaging 28.8 a game, while Russ is the leader in rebounds, averaging 8.1 and assists at 7.9. Looking at those trends, as I love to do, the Lakers are 18-25 and 25 and 1 against the spread this season, and when playing as at least the five-point favorite, they are 5-9. and nine. The Pacers, meanwhile, have put together a 22-22 and 22 against the spread record on the year, and when going into a game as the five-point underdogs, they're 6-1. 25 of LA's games this season have hit the over, and they have combined for this total of 225 and a half uh, and some in four of their last five games, while the Pacers have combined for the over in 21 of theirs, but uh, have only hit this total in two of the last five. So keep that in mind. I think I know everything that I need to know for this one, which means I will be taking the Lakers at home tonight at minus five. No offense to Indiana. I know they are looking to break the losing streak, but I don't see it happening tonight on the road at Crypto.com Arena, which I will never get used to saying. 
So, do you remember the stat you just read about what the Lakers are against the spread this season? Yes. They, they, don't they have one of the worst against the spread records in the NBA? It's just incredibly <laughs> middle of the road. Incredibly, like, it's 500. It's 22 and 22, right? Like, it's just... You can't get any more 500 than that team is. It's like, every one other statistical category literally is middle of the road, 500, <laughs> average. Like, the performances are just, they're just insane. Like, it's insane for there to be that kind of team right now. They've got to be on it's the move to learn something. There's a reason LeBron's apologizing to Magic Johnson and the fans is because that team is just ugh, it's, it's tough. It's tough to love. Yeah. What is it? Seventh in the West? Yeah. Very, very middle of the road, this, this Lakers team. Yeah, but wait until March. Then they get super hot, like last year. Is that when they're going to turn it on? I'm, they're they're all a hundred years old right now at this point. Like <laughs> I think they're waiting. They gotta be waiting until like the beginning of April or something. I don't know. Russ is putting in the work. Yeah, but Russ has also had nights where like uh, uh, opposing arenas are uh, playing cold as ice when he sh- goes over like twelve <laughs> from the beyond, from from uh, from, uh, from the floor. So yeah, it's it's rough. it's rough. I stand Russ. I will always defend him no matter what. Well. All right. You can't defend anybody else on that team, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's true.